Welcome to Connected with Lori. I am your host, Lori Caruso. I have a great guest in the studio today, Steve Turner from Turner Upholstery and Bring Back the Trades. Hi, Steve. How are you? Hi, Lori. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining today. I know uh, it's been a while. I had you on the show last year. Yeah. It was uh, on Lori and Bean, and then I think we also had a call in for you yes, too, we right? Have a call in, yes. We have a lot to talk about, but we haven't had a conversation in a while, and I'm super curious. So, bring back the trades. A big passion for you when you started having that be part of Turner Upholstery and what you're doing. Talk to us a little bit about bring back the trades so the audience understands what you do and your passions behind it. So Bring Back the Trades is a 501c3 scholarship program. We're trying to bring awareness of, to the lack of the younger youth going into the trades. So we, I started a uh, scholarship fund. Um, we raise money and we give out a scholarship once uh, a month for nine months throughout the school year. Um, so that's what we're all about. We're just trying to tr- bring awareness to um, the parents that there's more out there than just college. Um, we're not against college. My son just graduated and very successful and very we're all proud of him. But there's a lot of kids that are left behind because they don't want to go to college and we want them to know that the trades are a great option. Yeah. I'm in an industry too and I see the trades being a challenge. Uh, it's very challenging for sure to be able to have people come in from an education standpoint and also to continue to fill those positions, so to speak. And you know, with that, I see a, a ton of use here. Um, I know that you also said in some of our conversations, electrical, you had stats on it. It was really intriguing to me and why I'm so passionate about this. Tell us a little bit about that. Some of the stats you see from the electrician yeah, side. As far as electrical and plumber in the United States, uh, in New Hampshire, um, the average age of a plumber and electrician is like 55 to 65 years old. Um, so if we don't get kids into the trades within the next 10 years or next five years, all those guys are going to be retiring. But the biggest problem that I try and explain to them and the parents is if they don't find somebody to take on their business, that business closes. So even if it has 10 employees and those employees don't want to be the owner, they no longer have a job. And there's nobody to fill those businesses. So that's our biggest problem. Like me, I've been in business for 32 years. I have one guy that's been with me 17 years. He is 42. He's already told me when, you know, we're, we're pretty close in age. Uh, so when I close, Unless I find somebody to take over my business, it closes. And that's the hardest part that I'm talking to these people. It's, it's more what their business is worth to them to when they go to retire. Um, there's nobody to take it over. So, you know, I try and explain to the parents that, you know, that not only is it a great job, but it's not just a job. If they work long enough, they can take over the business and now they're a business owner. So it, there's a lot to it. There is a lot to it, for sure. So with that as well, I mean, you're looking at these businesses that you want to see thrive. I mean, that's obviously the challenge. Mm-hmm. You don't want that business to go out. Mm-hmm. So how do you bridge the gap, so to speak, from you know the process of what you deliver from a scholarship program and the trade school itself? Do you work with the trade schools? Do you actually align to be able to do that, to produce that educational experience for everyone? Well, right now we don't. Uh, We've got, well, we're working with the Northampton Trade School right now, but we're such a small organization right now that we're trying, and what's what's going on in the world right now, we can't really get out to the schools. We, as of last year, we would actually go to the schools, um, the high schools, middle schools, and we would set up a trade fair in the auditorium with five or six different, uh, we have Pella, uh, we have um, Paul Mershkanard, they're a plumbing outfit, and Pella does windows. And we, yeah. me as a pollster, we have a whole bunch of guys or women doing their trade, and the kids would come in and would learn that trade for a half day. So we would actually go to the schools. Uh, but as far as get back to the, the answer about the, the trade schools, we're trying to get out there to align ourselves with them to show, you know, get, advertise more of the schools out there because there's a lot of them in New Hampshire and there's a lot of them in Mass. Um, but we're just we're too small. And we're, we need more help getting out there to tell the kids, basically. That's it. I mean, I'm sure resource-wise. You know, I'm having these conversations in my industry, and every partner that I work with, when I 
talk about bring back the trades, every single person has said, oh my goodness, that is so important to us. Mm -hmm. We, you know, need to support that and we need to really push that effort because it's so critical and so important for us. So Steve, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back after these messages. Tenants complaining about their steep internet bill or no alternative for service? Added and provides the ultimate solution for your commercial or residential tenants who demand better connections. With bandwidth hungry services increasing rapidly, Additim can deliver up to 10 gig speed through their cloud managed technology. The in building network solution creates a common IP backbone that allows property managers to both sell better performing internet service to tenants and securely connect the in building infrastructure and smart building technologies to the internet. Are you ready to be the best internet service provider for your property? Contact additimims.com and make the change. Welcome back to Connected with Lori. We have Steve Turner in the studio and we're talking about bringing back the trades, a passion for him that he started and it is an important piece. I'm passionate about it myself, being in the industry and seeing that we have such a challenge with trades and filling those positions. So Steve, we were talking a little bit about, you know, what you're doing out there. Let's talk about also the process. How do people apply for the scholarship. What happens for those students that need a little help and support and what's the push behind it? How do you do that? So we have uh, Facebook, we have Instagram, um, and we basically have word of mouth, but we talk, go out and talk to the business. So what you do to apply for it is you have to be on the Northeast. Um, there's nine different states that we're putting it in right now, we're hopefully moving it all the way across you know, the country at some point. But um, you go to the SA part on this on the website and you fill out reason why you're eligible or willing to be eligible for the scholarship and then you have to write a little essay of what you know what why you want to win and I always tell people uh, considering the trades are not uh, a lot of the kids aren't really good at uh, penmanship and all that so I tell them it's not about how you write just tell your story tell your story so I'm assuming you probably have one award or so that was recent. Talk to me a little bit about the awards, maybe one that comes to mind. Yeah, I mean, the one that really comes to mind is Connor Fleming. He's uh, He won, I think it was September. He is an underwater diver. He does welding and stuff like that under the water, which I didn't even really know they had. Um, so he was going, he actually went, I, don't quote me, but I think it was in Seattle that he went to school. And he just graduated, uh, I think it was in May, and he's got a full-time job working on the seacoast um, doing underwater diving and stuff like that. He does maintenance and welding and stuff like that. So it's a success story. Wow. Yeah. What are some of the other awards that you've given in certain unique areas? Yeah, we've given um, one to, I can't remember her name, but she was in uh, Mason School. They restore antique buildings in Maine. There's a masonry school in Maine. Uh, We gave it to her. She goes in and learns masonry. They go to historical sites, um, houses, stuff like that, and they restore all the mason, mason. So that was another one. Countless, countless industries, countless jobs. Yes, I can stuff only that we don't, imagine. I don't even remember. Yeah, right, yeah. right. The list just continues to go on. I mean, we talk about the electricians, the plumbers, the normal things that we would think from a, a career standpoint, but there's so many other, I, I would imagine. So talk to us also. I know that you try to get your message out, and you have social media, clearly. Mm-hmm. You have a website that they can go visit. Yep. How else do you do it? Um, that's about it. It's Instagram, Facebook. Um, we were going to all the schools, and like I said, we were going to schools. We were doing a lot of trade fairs. We do cars and coffee every Sunday. First, it's the first Sunday of the month. Um, I think it's May through October. Um, we go there and we we have set up. We have a tent and we set up that. We sell our apparel. Uh, we get donations and everybody's walking around. We sell um, stickers and uh, we have all kinds of stuff that we get little trinkets we give away. But that's uh, right now. That's what we're doing. We're going out and doing it. But we're, the, our biggest problem right now is trying to get the kids to know about us. Mm. Our Facebook page um, is pretty much all adults, so we're, our main focus right now is letting the kids know that there's money available, and that's our hardest thing, which you wouldn't think it would be that hard to give away money, but right now it's reaching the kids that are eligible for these programs. There is money available. That's a big, big message. Yeah. Give it away. Yeah. You need to have people come in and apply. Exactly. 
Yeah. So, uh, I mean, again, really, really important. What's your website? I know that we were talking about, um, you know, the social media piece. How do people reach you on the website? Um, how do they reach us? Yeah. What's your website oh, address? Oh, bring the trade. Bring back the trades. Bring back the trades. Bring back the, tra- uh, bring back the trades on Instagram as well. Okay. Good. Yeah. yeah. So that's the message. Clearly, you've got money. We need to have some support out there. Yeah. How do you also? I mean, this is a big challenge. You're one person, mm-hmm. right? Well, I have a board. And you have a board, yes, right? I have a board. Yes. Uh, okay, but can't you're forget about them. They're very important. Very influential yeah, and very important. They do important. great work with me. Yes. Uh, we've got uh, a tile guy. Uh, we've got um, a machinist. We've got an uh, electrician. Uh, we got an IT guy. My wife is very, very proud of her. She's done a really great job. She's a teacher. Uh, my son's involved. He does a lot of the um, wow. um, Instagram and Facebook, Riley. And then we've got, uh, I think that's five. So we get, we've got a board that it's all made up of a small business people. So it's great. So it's great to have their influence and their obviously their opinions on you know how to make this happen. Mm-hmm. But still, you are the forefront. Yes. Sounds like you definitely have a great team behind you. But mm-hmm. from an expansion perspective, let's say this is a national effort. This is a global effort. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're really I, this is a pain point that we see everywhere. Mm-hmm. As far as your future, how do you see the growth for Bring Back the Trades? Um, like I said earlier, I wish I'm hoping that it's not just the East Coast; it's the whole United States. And um, bring back the trades is a national name. That's what I'm hoping down the road. You know, a lot of people will make fun of me, uh, or not make fun of me, but will ask me this question: Bring back the trades? I don't get it. We're, the trades never went anywhere. I get that all the time. I'm like, that's not what we're about. We're get we're about getting the younger kids back into the trades. They're, they're like. Where did the trades ever go? I'm like, it's not that the trades went anywhere. It's the shortage of the younger kids being educated that it's a great job. If you don't have the backfill, though, I can see that trade actually disappearing. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be saying, gosh, what happened to? And why isn't that there? That's an important piece. So what a huge message. Steve Turner, bring back the trades. Let's get the message out. Let's get those scholarships filled. Mm -hmm. Let's get those students back in and fill those positions. I think it's a great effort and I really appreciate you being on the show. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Interested in being part of our show or advertising on our podcast? Contact us at info at fifthgenmedia.com for more information. We'd love to be a part of your success.